This for my dogs, for my dogs, man, that always stay down, 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 down. What's good, you guys? It's Bennett Knows out here repping in LA, and I'm currently sitting with one of the hottest producers out here right now, Bongo the Drum God. What's good, man? What's good, man? I'm chilling, I'm chilling. Thank you for having me. But right now, Bongo has some work on one of the hottest albums out right now. Number one album, Big Sean, Dark Sky Paradise. Um, responsible for uh, y YAS yep. um, on Trey Song's album. A few tracks on Amarion's new album. Um, he's done work with a lot of people, so we're about to catch up, see um, how he made it to this position where he's at right now, what's going on, and what's next for this dude right here. So, yo, give us a little introduction. He's from Rhode Island. He he came from Rhode Island, so he's, I don't know if you rep it still. You, yeah, do you rep definitely, right? man. I, I always tell people I'm from a lot of places. I was born in Nigeria, raised in Providence, Rhode Island. And, and in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of different influences. I definitely love R.I. Because being out there, I really learned like to love my craft, you know? Yeah. And then in the South, I learned how people feel when they listen to music. Mm -hmm. You know, how they how people interact with the music. Yeah. So, and then out here, I'm just focused on making them hits. So yeah. it's like, I appreciate Rhode Island. Because Rhode Island really got me my start. And it really, like, introduced me to people who were, like, you know, even to this day, like, shout out to Roger Will, like, you know, like, people that, you know, to this day have held me down, so. Definitely, definitely. So, um, where did you get started? Um, I know if you, if you don't put it together, uh, you know, Bongo, the drum god, um, it has something to do with drums, correct? <laughs> so, um, so, tell me a little bit of how you, um, found your passion in making music, um, when it comes to producing. Um, man. Shout out to my brother. Um, my brother, he taught me, I mean, he taught me so much about yeah. music when I was just super young, like eight years old. And uh, I pretty much started listening, like in Rhode Island, listening to music. I played in church. You know, I just, I made beats. I started rapping when I was eight. And, uh... Rapper? You're a rapper too? I was... <laughs> Did you spit, like, a quick bar real quick? <laughs> you put that out there. You put it out there. I'll, I'll do it at the end. I'm going to do it at the end. I'm going to do it at the end. Um, but yeah, yeah, I started rapping but because i didn't have my own tracks you yep. know i didn't have anything to rap to i started making my own beats okay. and i know i always knew what i wanted stuff to sound like mm -hmm. but it took a while of you know just working with stuff and that's why i'm glad i started when i was 11. yeah so the earlier, i had the better. time yeah to really like you know nurture my craft and stuff and i know it's as bongo the drum guy but i do everything you know yeah. I, I even play keys i play bass I, you know i play drums i play percussion yep so but a lot of people it's it's hard for people to find good you know drum programming mm -hmm. nowadays or someone to come and finish the record yeah so you know that's um you know i do that stuff from, with my eyes closed so mm -hmm. with your eyes closed <laughs> with the shades on <laughs> with either the way shades on, yeah. <laughs> um yo so how does like I, I don't know much about producers but how does how does some someone like develop and you know kind of become an expert in producing music to the point where they could like make that transition into entertainment and like start working with like big names because you know like you said you you started in the church you know with instruments and stuff but somewhere along from age eight to you know that first uh that first you know project where you really popped off um there was a lot of experiences within there so tell me a little bit about that like development over the years to become someone who is like proficient and an expert it started it starts with it begins to me it begins and ends with, ends with passion as mm -hmm. far as getting to this point you yeah. know there's other things there's knowing the business there's knowing uh how to work with people there's knowing the right people yeah. knowing how to network all that stuff mm -hmm. but it begins and ends with passion for, for sure. me because if you're not truly passionate about it you're not going to go the extra mile you're not yeah. going to put in the extra things that it's going to take you're not even going to it's not because you don't want to it's because you don't know to mm -hmm. because literally like there are different things that i've found out about myself different skills different yeah. you know uh ways that i can make myself more unique make my craft make my gift more you know um viable and 
that's only come from like long nights and yeah. doing things and then stumbling on other things and learning oh wow i could do that too well let me do that let me go into this world let me perfect that like it's just really having the time and the love and the dedication for to, sure. to to make that happen and for me it was always like there's there are a million people that make music but i always strove for my music to be at a certain caliber i wouldn't even like I'd play stuff for my friends, yep. But I wouldn't be like I would never go to a studio and be like, "Boom, this is the hottest." This you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until like I was like, "Okay, yeah." You this know what I'm saying? I know, yep. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I hear. I know what it's supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. And until I got to that point, you know, it wasn't even like, like it wasn't even like, okay, now I'm here. It was like I was at a studio. I'm so humble because I would I damn near never think I was at that point. Yeah, but. You know, my first um, my first placement with Music Soul Child, shout out Music Soul Child and Drew Castro. Shout out to um, uh My first placement was like, I was like 18, and it was a track that I had just left at the studio, yep. and the dude played it from music, and they actually wrote the song for Indie I Read. Long story. Long story. Yeah, <laughs> but he ended up keeping it. Yep. But it's like when certain, certain things happen, they give you those moments of validation. Mm -hmm. When you're like, okay... This, I'm in the right path. I'm, I'm, I'm doing, doing the right, doing the right things. things. Right. Yeah. So. so how did you get to that point where they played your track? You know, like, um, I know you interned. Uh, yeah. How did that go? Like, you worked your way up the ladder. Tell me yeah. about, about those steps that you took. Like I said, passion. Like, passion will, passion will allow passion you to... Passion will drive you in yeah, the right direction, it'll, for sure. It'll allow you to clean toilets and make food runs. And <laughs> <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for 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 a short moment in time, um, and I definitely did that. That was out in um in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. at the Music House. Um, like I definitely put my um pay my dues out there. Wait, so the, you were at the crib, like doing the dirty work? Doing the dirty work and still you working at the same time. Were you assistant? No, no, no. I, I always made music, but at the same time, like I would help out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would help out with the sessions. I would run help people do different things. Just playing yourself you know out just there. To be, like, just to, just be, to be there, there yep. you know, and mm -hmm. know what's going on. Have a pulse on what's going on. Yep. Because typically what you find is stuff that you hear on the radio or that's just coming out. Like today has been done, sat, slept, uh, like mauled over for mo at least three months before yeah. it even comes out. So if you're really serious about being in this industry, you got to find a way to put yourself in those channels that okay. allow you to be ahead of the curve. For sure, for sure. So like I said, I don't know much about um, this field, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to like pick your pick your brain a little just so I could kind of get a small perspective of what goes on. So um, tell me about like the day to day grind of a producer. Like you're in the studio. Just tell me about that. And I have a few questions to, you know, pop off of that. It's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, it's it's a lot because it's not always I mean, part only part of it is, you know, sitting behind the keyboard or yeah. sitting behind the computer. There, you know, you gotta be able to deliver for certain people. You know, you gotta be able to do certain things. You gotta handle, be able to handle business yeah. properly. You know, you gotta have the right people in place as far as management, or and just people that are helping you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's really, um, and that's one thing that I've learned a lot since being out here. Producing is more than it, like you can produce without playing, without yeah. pressing, you know, mm -hmm. a key on the on the keyboard. It's putting the right people together, and to an extent, it's managing personalities. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, that's always a given, <laughs> always managing like, personalities. Like, if you can do it yourself, like, I like to take the Pharrell approach sometimes. I mean, most of the time, and, like, as much as I can do myself, I do yeah. myself because it makes it simple. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you, you got to you gotta be a team player, yep. and you want to have the best of the best. You know, you want to have certain people like Kevin Randolph, and Tony Chicago, shout out both of them. Those are like hired assassins, man. Yeah. They, keys and bass guitar. Like so when you when you want to produce at a certain level, you gotta have the right people around you, mm -hmm. and it's knowing how to you know how to interact and just be a team player and work. Right. It's just working with people. Right. Yep. All right. All right. So I know you you discussed the keyboard, um, and then we have this thing behind us. <laughs> uh, what kind of equipment do you use and like are you using are you using um instruments because i know i was having a conversation uh, f a 
few days back and like somebody was saying like yo I, I can't stand music right now because mm -hmm. everything's computerized we've lost you know the live instruments so tell me your perspective on that like what type of equipment do you work on um, and how important is it um, to use live instruments or how important is it to you know master something like this right here what is this like, what is this That's a board. but um, <laughs> to be honest with you to be 1000% it's it's not I mean I feel like it's a two part question um, yeah definitely for me I don't I've always been a minimalist okay. because I have almost been forced to do the most with the least mm -hmm. like first and foremost you need this up here you have to have a creative mind because okay. you could have all the equipment in the world mm -hmm. you can have all this all these speakers a thousand keyboards midi keyboards live drum set mm -hmm. electronic drum set everything and still not and still do, not you know and still not make anything yep. of value or that anybody even rocks with mm -hmm. so for me it's it's all about just having that creative spark okay and um I guess the second part of the question um, is like organic, yeah, 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 organic versus synthesized instruments. I grew up, you know, appreciating, you know, organic sounds. Like I played in the church. I mean, I grew up listening to like, you know, Erica Badu, The Roots. Yeah. I mean, like you know, people that really like, you Tap know, into, like, yeah, that feel, mm -hmm. and, and and I appreciate that. So I always try to incorporate that into my music. Definitely. But at the same time, like I do appreciate the nuances of technology mm -hmm. because they do allow you to express yourself in in another way and have different sounds, different soundscapes yeah. that you know are cutting edge, and people are like, "Ooh, I like that. I want that." You know, yeah. so. As a producer, you can't put yourself in a box. For sure, for sure. You gotta kind of work with everything that you have. Right. Okay, dope, dope. So, what's your mind, like, where's your mind when you're in the studio? Like, how do you come up with these sounds? Like, you start from scratch and you, boom, you have this, like, crazy production of different sounds and, like, how does that come together? Are you, like, kind of listening to music and saying, like, yo, I like this, I like this? Or maybe you're in the studio and you're saying, like, yo, this... I want to make a track for this artist or someone like kind of in this area, this mm. genre. How does this work? How do you develop? How do you build something from scratch? Well, it depends on how the process starts. I mean, like, I, I'm always, I'm about moments. Okay. I need moments in my music. You know, yeah. it has the if the thing that has to inspire the record has to be a moment. Mm -hmm. So like whether it's a chord progression, whether it's the drum sound, whatever whether it's a sample, yep. something has to inspire that moment. And even with us when I when I might be with an artist, the artists help inspire the moment too. Yeah. By telling what saying what they feel and what they're going through or what they're looking for, what mm -hmm. they're aiming for. So you just wanna be able to grasp onto those moments and then interpret them and then have the musicians do this do their thing or you do your own thing or yep. find the sample. It's 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 all about moments to me. Moments. All right, all right, that's dope. And um if you had to well, yeah, you have to. I'm about to ask. <laughs> um, how would you describe your sound without putting yourself in a box? Hmm. Well, I mean, I hate to be redundant, but like a collection of moments, because I wanna, I want it to be like, okay, when you hear this, you know, you f it makes you feel a certain type of okay. way, you know, and that like even like I I go through different phases where mm -hmm. you know where I might do like a whole bunch of cinematic shit, or I might do some. You know, I went through, uh, I mean, I'm always like, since I'm Nigerian, so yep. I'm always going back and, you know, taking digging back to my African influences. Okay. So it's like, I want to, whatever, whatever piece of music I play, I want the consistent theme to be moments. Moments. Okay, I, I like the, where you're going with, like, I like that, you know, whether the moment is like going back to your roots or the moment is like the experiences or the feelings that you're having at the moment. Right. It's all about that moment, you Is know, and delivering it with your right. work because if you can take that moment and and make it timeless yeah. you know what i'm saying it, it's kind of like even just the idea of it it's a moment it's a moment in time mm -hmm. but you're able to capture it and make it timeless so yep. that at any point in time you can go back and reference that moment and know how you felt when you listened to that record know what you were going through when you were listening to that mm -hmm. record remember what your friends were going through remember yeah. how what where you were in life you mm -hmm. know 
that's the goal, you know? Yeah, definitely. I like that.